Um, and um, another question I wanted to ask about your uni experience. I understand that you became somewhat of a DJ. You had like your own sound system. <laughs> um, and I, I got two questions around that. One, um, I know that because you wrote in your book that a lot of your client base was a, was amongst like ACSs and African and Caribbean oh, yeah. society. Yeah. So one question is how much did that and does that still play to kind of your 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 ability to I guess your commerciality if that makes any yeah. sense. Do you have to do you still find yourself having to rely on the black community for in order to make money as, as it was when you were a DJ. And mm. then also in terms of the sound system culture, it's a very Caribbean culture. And mm. I, I guess at that time, most of the most of the immigrant, most of the black immigrants in the UK at the time were Caribbean. Mm. Was there, what, what, were there tensions between the African and Caribbean communities or was it all very kind of harmonious, at least in your experience anyway, was it all very harmonious? Oh no, we loved each other. We got on very well. Okay, uh, the Caribbean women were very beautiful. Uh, <laughs> and uh, we um, we loved their music. Yeah, yeah, you're right because there were few Nigerians yeah. in those days. Uh, what we have now is very different from what we had then. So the clubs that we went to were Caribbean clubs. Uh, the music that we listened to was Gregory Isaacs mm. and uh, Dennis Brown, Barrington Lever, and all the rest of that. We skanked better than the Jamaicans. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, Ni Nigerians could dance, and so once we studied how the skanking went, yeah, uh, we will skank like anything. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and, and so, yeah, we had a very good relationship. There was none of the uh, uh, none of the tension mm. uh, in this when we were studying. They tended to be Caribbean students. We'll be studying with. And my sound system, Bay 69, was, uh, in London at least, it was uh, a first generation, w one of that, of the first generation sound systems. Mm. Because then uh, Soul to Soul was a sound system, mm. um, uh, led by Jazzy B, before they started going into music production, etc. Mm. They were that successful. Uh, the other big sound system then was Roxy. Mm -hmm. um, whenever Roxy used to, <laughs> organize an event, yeah, tickets yeah, sold out. out, they sold out. And Bay 69 was good. Yeah. Um, we were, I had a good ear for music, mm. uh, still do. And I was the lead DJ. Mm. Uh, so the other guys would warm up the turntable for me before yeah. the dance before would start proper. And uh, we were playing at uh, the universities, the Black yeah. Student Society, the ACS uh, societies then. Um, we would travel to Kent ACS, go and play for them, mm. and um, um, we would tra we would travel all over. Uh, and mainly, it was um, reggae, mm. uh, lovers rock, um, calypso, mm. and soul. Mm. That was the combination. The Nigerian music scene was still very much reliant on the Black American. In those yeah, days. I can imagine. Yeah. Yes, yeah, the 80s soul, the Shalimars, and all the rest of that. Mm. Um, that there was, a, I, I did observe a slight distinction in music taste because uh, Nigerians dance non stop. You know, yeah. we, 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 we dance in the morning, we dance in the afternoon. <laughs> we, 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 when the light is on, we dance. In yeah. fact, don't turn the light off. That's yeah, how yeah, Nigerians exactly. dance. Because <laughs> they want you to see them, what we're wearing, how we're moving. <laughs> Whereas the Caribbean one, all the light's off. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. So yeah, they don't want you seeing them in the dark, etc. Yeah, yeah. So uh, there was an interesting contrast in the cultures then. Um, but now the Nigerian music scene yeah, exactly. has, has really come alive. But... Uh, I digress a little, and in terms of how that fed into the law practice, uh, in the early days, you, I had to, it was a new frontier that I was trying to break into. Yeah. I was coming from a top city law firm where the clients of that law firm were the household names like Barclays Bank and um, uh, Piano Ferries and all the rest of that. Yeah. If you're leaving from that level, uh, you're leaving on your own. You know, you you haven't got a following. Yeah. Because those big corporations need a huge setup to support and to meet their legal requirements. So you're starting with a blank sheet of paper, and so I had to strategize in terms of where my client's going to come from, and you've got to go back to your own community yeah. at that point. And my focus was very much the 
uh, Afro-Caribbean society, uh, partly because I also wanted them to step up uh, to set up businesses as well, that we mm. needed to make the transition as a community mm. from being employees to employees. being entrepreneurs yeah. and to be employers. Uh, we needed to create jobs uh, and not just to do jobs. Yeah. Uh, and so I, I tailored my, my services to them. Um, and um, in the early stages, they were mainly the foundation. You know, yeah. you, you fish in your own waters. Yeah. I always regarded the selling to the uh, mainstream community as like almost export. Yeah. <laughs> but my domestic market, I needed to contain always. and control my domestic market. I needed to be the lead law firm within the uh, uh, African Caribbean community. And we took we took that position very, very quickly. Yeah. And we haven't let go since. Yeah. You know, we, uh, we, our clients sometimes, they're parts of, England that I haven't even been to, you know, yeah. uh, uh, black clients, Liverpool, uh, Manchester, Birmingham, yeah. um, because when they're in need of a commercial law firm, uh, they will sometimes, <laughs> not enough, yeah. they'll sometimes look for their own. Yeah. It's a funny thing, I often say that uh, our people tend to look for their own when they're on their way down. Yeah. Rather but than when, when they're on their way up. Yeah. <laughs> no, in the early stages when they're really on their way up, when there's no money, they'll look for you. Yeah. yeah they'll yeah. come and find you when, when there's no money. money yeah, and they say, look, I ain't got outside. money, bro. Yeah. You know, but I need some yeah. advice in that. As soon as the money starts coming in, <laughs> it's like the car you drive. <laughs> <laughs> they say, who's your law firm? They, say, they want to mention one black law firm that nobody's heard of. Yeah. They want to he mention uh, Slaughter and May, Fresh yeah. Fields. Then when the money finishes on the way down, they come and they look for you again. Interesting. Um, 